This lesson will focus on how to download patterns off the internet and bring them into your QuiltPath tablet. Your QuiltPath system comes with many different wonderful patterns built in as well as the ability to create your own designs. Of course, there are also lots of digital pattern companies online where you can purchase designs to add to your collection. Plus, most have a few freebie patterns you can download to try out their website, which also allows you to take a look at the quality of their patterns. First, while your QuiltPath tablet is completely capable of checking your email, hopping on Facebook, and navigating online for purchases, we recommend you do not use your QuiltPath tablet to surf the internet. In fact, we strongly encourage you to keep your tablet in the airplane mode when using QuiltPath to prevent Windows from automatically downloading updates to your tablet while you are quilting with QuiltPath. We want to keep your tablet clean and free of any viruses you might encounter online. For that reason, we recommend you use your desktop computer to do your pattern shopping. The first thing you will need is a USB jump drive or thumb drive. You can easily find one in the electronics section of most major retailers. While this video will show you how to transfer your purchase patterns to your QuiltPath tablet for easy access, we also encourage you to be sure you are consistently backing up the data on your regular desktop computer in order to protect your patterns in case your desktop computer suffers a hard drive failure. For this video, I have named my USB drive My QP USB. We do not recommend that you use the jump drive you received with your QuiltPath for this purpose, as it contains the master program on it. We are going to be working with the Windows Explorer portion of your desktop computer. If navigating to folders and creating new folders on your home computer isn't something you feel comfortable doing, please consider taking an online course on basic computer literacy at lynda.com, your local library, or county extension office. You will have much more success in computerized quilting if you are comfortable moving through files and folders inside your hard drive along with basic computer literacy skills. For this tutorial, we are using Windows 8 with the latest Internet Explorer browser version. If you prefer using a different browser or operating system, your process for downloading patterns may be slightly different. Be sure you have the latest version of your preferred browser. Let's grab a free pattern from digitechpatterns.com and walk through how to bring it into the tablet. Select the downloadable designs icon. Notice that it is blue and all menus and pages within the digital pattern portion of this site are blue. If you see a different color, you are not in their digital pattern site. Go back to the main menu and select the blue icon. Before we download a free pattern, let's look at things to be aware of when choosing a digital design for purchase. Hover over the Patterns by Designer and, just for fun, let's click on my name, Angela Huffman, to take a look at the information you need to seek out when selecting patterns. Click on the image for the candy corn pantograph. Many sites will provide images showing how a pattern will stack together so you can better understand how it will look on your quilt. Whenever you wish to purchase a design, you'll want to be sure it comes in a file format that will work for QuiltPath. Thankfully, we have a number of file types that QuiltPath will accept, with the most common ones being QLI and CQP. QuiltPath will also open CMD, CSV, DXF, HQF, TAP, TXT, XY, and QData. The native file type for QuiltPath is .gpf. You'll see that this pattern comes in many different formats when you download it, almost all of which QuiltPath will accept. You'll also see that the recommended size for the pattern is 4 to 9 inches. Now, let's take a look at how to download a freebie design and bring it into QuiltPath. Tap on the Free Items menu button. We're going to grab the block design called Abstract Block 212 by Jessica Schick. On this website, when you click on a freebie pattern, you do not have to go through the regular checkout process. Instead, the site will automatically start the download of the pattern you've clicked straight into your computer. As I said, I'm running Windows 8 with the latest version of Internet Explorer. After clicking on the image, a dialog box appears asking me what I want to do with this file I'm attempting to download. Always choose either Save or Save As. I prefer to use Save As so I control where the file is placed during the download. If you choose Save, the computer will generally default to using your downloads folder for any downloading you do. I'm going to click on Save As and navigate to the folder where I would like all of my purchase patterns to be saved. 
In this case, it's in my Documents folder. I'm going to create a new folder and name it Purchased QP Patterns. I'll click Enter to enter that name on this folder and then click on Open to open this new folder up. Here's my new empty folder I just created all ready for me to save my downloaded pattern. I'll keep the original name from the designer for the download, but later when I bring it into my quilt path, I'll rename it to something that I prefer. Now, click Save. At the bottom of my browser, I am notified that the download has completed. Normally, I'd click on Open to be taken to the new patterns files, but I'd really like you to see exactly what we've downloaded so you can understand how these files are sent to you from the designer's website. Click on Open Folder. There's our new pattern file. Do you see that it says it is a compressed file? In order to speed up the time it takes to download all the information in our pattern file, websites use what is called a .zip file or compressed file in order to speed up your download process. We will need to uncompress or unzip the file so we can get to the pattern. With your mouse, right click on the file name and a new drop down menu will appear. Select Extract All and you'll be asked to select where you'd like to place your uncompressed file. I typically just keep it in the same folder, but you can change this if you prefer. Make sure the Show Extracted Files When Complete box is checked, and click on Extract. Do you see all the different file types from the designer? Many websites will provide every file type for every computerized quilting system under the sun in their pattern files. Most of the time, they'll also include a PDF and image file for you too. We are interested in the CQP file type of our pattern for this tutorial. With your mouse, right click on the CQP file and select Copy. Our new pattern file is now sitting in our temporary memory of our computer. All we need to do is paste the file onto our jump drive that we'll be using to transfer our patterns to QuiltPath. Make sure your jump drive is plugged into your home computer. Remember that I named mine MyQP USB. Yours may be named something different. Navigate to the jump drive by clicking on it in the file tree to the left to open up your jump drive. To keep things neat and tidy, I like to create a new folder in my jump drive named Patterns to Import. Double check the file tree to be sure you have the Patterns to Import folder open inside the MyQP USB jump drive and then right click inside the blank area in the folder and select Paste. Do you see the pattern now? Great! Keep in mind that we are only downloading one pattern, but we could certainly keep shopping and place multiple patterns on our jump drive until we're ready to bring everything into our QuiltPath tablet. I'm done shopping for now, and I'm ready to bring the pattern into QuiltPath. We need to eject the jump drive from our main computer by right-clicking on the name of the jump drive and selecting Eject. You can now safely pull out the jump drive from your computer. We are ready to bring the patterns into the QuiltPath tablet with my QP USB jump drive. We'll do that in the next lesson. Mm -hmm.